Hey everybody, today I'm gonna to count through 22 games that I believe would be perfect for your Christmas day to play with your family. Now these are games that are very fast, very fun, uh, have a very low rules overhead, so you can play this with pretty much anybody in your family. You know, people who don't play games very often or even just play them once a year. You're not gonna spend uh, copious amounts of time reading through rule books and getting bored before you even begin. So um, let's get started, and I should say this list is in no particular order. So just if anything takes you fancy or you like the sound of something, just go do a bit of research and see if the game's for you. Okay, so let's get started. So at number one, I've got Telestrations. Now Telestrations is a, a very, very funny game, probably one of the funniest games on this list. Um, hilarious laugh out loud moments. Uh, basically it's Chinese whispers, but with doodling. So all you do is you have these dry erase books you um, draw something on them, and you can either think of something yourself, which I personally think is funnier, or you can um, refer to some reference cards and get an idea for yourself. Um, but you draw them, then pass them to your player on your left, and then they write what they think it is, and then you pass it on to the next player, then they draw what you've written, and so on, until it gets back to you, and then you, you spend your time just flipping through the books and seeing how, um, how the pictures have developed. It's very funny just how, um, how obscure they get and how off path they get from what they actually originated from, but a great one to just uh, pass the time with and it's so addictive and fun and you know you don't even care about the scoring so it's not competitive whatsoever but just guaranteed good time that's telestrations so next i have wits and wages now this is a brilliant game it is a trivia style game um, but with a big twist to it it's basically um you're asked a number based question um and they're pretty much based on guesstimates. You, you're not likely to know a lot of the answers, but everybody secretly writes down their answer. They put them face down. Then once everybody's written them down, they all reveal them. And then you place them in like numerical order or chronological order. And um, basically the extremities of those, um, of those answers are worth more points because you can actually bet on other people's answers. So it's a game that you don't even have to be good at general knowledge to play, which is a really cool concept because you can just bet on people that you think are right and you know, as you earn more money, you can bet that money as well. It only pays about through seven questions at a round, so it's quick, it plays a lot of players, and it's just tremendous fun, it's just a really well-designed game. That's Wits and Wages. Next, I have Camel Up. Now, this is um, a super fun game. It's actually a game of the year uh, a few years ago, in 2014. Um, it's basically a betting game or, or a gambling game where you are betting on these different camels who are going to win the leg of the race and who's going to win the ultimate race. Um, it uses this really cool dice mechanism where you roll dice which determines which colour camel moves. But the camels, if they land on top of each other, they actually stack. And then obviously if the ones underneath it rule, move, then they carry the ones on top of them forward as well. So there's loads of variability here and loads of kind of variables that just mess with the bidding and mess with the odds and probabilities really cool kind of photo finishes in the game and it's just a great fun experience it takes about 20 minutes to play so uh, a great one to check out and there is a newer version of this as well with slightly different box art um, but this one looks a bit more kiddified and it's just it's just a great fun game that's camel up next i have this is probably my most um advanced game on this on on this kind of list of games which is decrypto now this is a word-based game where you are working in a team versus another team and you have a secret bunch of words and you've got to basically give a three, or based on a card, you are basically giving a code to your team um, by giving clues. And they've got to try work out the clues based on the words that you have that the other team can't, can't see. And basically the other team, as the game goes on, they're kind of working out what, what words you are giving to your own team so they can try and intercept and guess what your code is before your team guess. And basically the first team to either intercept the other team twice or if you miscommunicate with your own team twice, um, then the opposite team wins. So it's a very thinky game where you have to kind of think outside the box, um, be obscure, but not too obscure so your team don't get it, but an incredibly well thought of game and probably one of my favorite games of this list. It's just so clever and so well designed. That is Decrypto. Next, I have Just One. Now, this is uh, was a huge hit of 2018. A very simple idea where everybody has a dry erase board. Um, it's a cooperative game, which I should say, where everybody's working together, so that's a nice change. Um, so somebody's gonna have the secret card, they're gonna pick a number, which relates to a word on the card. Um, then everybody's gonna write a one word clue relating to that word to try and make the person in the hot seat try and guess it. But the trick is that 
if two, two, or two or more people write the same answer, then those answers are completely um, discarded or just wiped off and the, the person in the hot seat won't see them. So you have to be as unique as you can, but again, not, as obs not too obscure so the person won't get it. Um, it's funny because sometimes you think, you know, I don't wanna be too simple um, because somebody else is gonna write it, but then the opposite person thinks that as well. So everyone goes really obscure and then some people write the same things and it's, it's absolutely a great, great fun experience and so simple and fast. That is just one. Uh, that's a high recommendation from me. Next, we have Magic Maze. Now this is a really unique game. It's, a, it's a, another cooperative game where you're working together, but it's a real time game. So you are actually playing against the clock um, you're basically navigating these different pawns around this supermarket or this, this shopping mall and trying to get these different fantasy characters their own weapons. But the trick is that everybody has, um, everybody's controlling all these pawns at the same time, but only each person can, 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 can move them in a specific direction. So for example, I could only move them north, someone else could move them west or south or east. Some people can only use the escalators to get around. So it's a real, um, you know, it's a real puzzly style game. But another twist of it is you can't communicate whatsoever. It's gotta be played in pure silence. And if, if you are relying on someone else to make a particular move, then you've got this big red pawn that you just slam in front of somebody just to remind them to say, you need to move something. But highly stressful, but incredibly entertaining and fun. And you know, each game takes about five minutes to play. So uh, another High recommendation there, that is Magic Maze. Next, we have an extremely popular game, one that I've recommended before. This is Sheriff of Nottingham. Now, this is a, a bluffing style game where you are trying to basically smuggle goods past a certain player who will be playing the sheriff, um, and each round that sheriff will change. But basically, you have a, a physically a bag, and you're putting cards in that bag, and then you're declaring to the sheriff, you know, do you want, sorry, I, I have, say, five chickens or Three, um, three cheese or something like that. But you could be telling the truth or you could be lying. And it's up to the sheriff to decide if he wants to check your bags or let you pass without any questioning whatsoever. And if he checks your bags and you turn out to be lying, then you have to pay the sheriff. And if you are telling the truth, then the sheriff has to pay you. And that's pretty much the extent of it. It's incredibly fun, a great social game, and I said, a real great bluffing aspect to it too. Um, really good one, that's Sheriff of Nottingham. Uh, Next we have When I Dream. Now this is a lovely game, gorgeous components, um, a nice, nice cards and artwork. It's, um, it's a game where everybody is given a secret role. So you're either a fairy, a, um, a boogeyman, or a sandman. And basically someone is gonna be wearing a blindfold and they are gonna be trying to guess words um, which come up on this, on this stack of cards. Um, but the trick is that the, the sandmen, or sorry, the, the fairies are trying to make the person with the blindfold get them correct. The person with the the person with the boogeyman cards are trying to make them guess them incorrect, and the person with the sandman cards are trying to keep a balance of the two. So it's a very funny game because you know people will be giving words that relate to the clue, and then people will just be trying to throw them off, just coming up with completely random words, and it's just an absolutely just a, a massive mind boggle when you are wearing the blindfold and you haven't got a clue who to believe and who not to believe, but. Great fun game, When I Dream. Okay, let's go into some of our smaller box games. So we have Push. Now Push is um, an ultra fun game. It's, um, I don't think it's as widely available in the UK as it is in America. I think I got my version from America. But it's a Pushy Luck style game where you are basically, um, Basically, if someone has, someone's go, they draw cards from this st huge stack of cards and they have, um, I think it's six different colors and numbered one to six as well. And you have three different columns you can put them in, but in each column, you cannot duplicate a color or a number. So, and if you ever do duplicate a number, color or a number, then you'll go bust and everybody else can kind of pick a stack of cards to take as points. But the, the cool thing about this is, is when, when, it's, when you do take a stack of cards, you put them on what's called your bench. So they're actually the points that you have for the end of the game, but they're not safe. Because also on some of those cards is like a, a roll your dice card. And when you roll the dice, um, they're all represented by a different color. And if you roll the dice and it lands on a certain color, then you lose all the cards on your bench of that color. Um, ultimate, or alternatively, you can just choose to bank all your cards and keep them completely safe. But it's a great push your luck game, so pure. And um, 
I think I've, I've had a lot of success with this one. Everyone's kind of really enjoyed it. And just the, the tension of when you roll that dice, are you gonna lose your huge stack of points? Are you gonna bank them early to make sure you don't lose them? Um, you can play with two um, alter, alternative versions as well, where if you land the black side of the die, then you can choose to either lose none of your cards or you can choose to lose all of your cards, which I personally recommend. It adds the tension so much more, but uh, a great game, this one, uh, in a nice little package, that is Push. Next we have Insider by Oink Games. This is a tiny little box game. Um, it's basically, basically 20 questions, but with a little bit of a twist. So um, basically someone is going to um, be like the master and they're gonna have a word on a card. Um, and that's gonna be a pretty obscure, obscure word, hard to guess. And everybody's gonna be asking questions to, and the person in the hot seat is either gonna say yes, no, or maybe to try and help them deduce down what this item or object or thing is. Um, and, but, the, but the cool thing is that out of all the players who are answering the questions, one of them is an insider. And that insider knows what the word is and it's his job to almost lead the other players with you know, clever questions into guessing what the word is. Because without the insider, it's probably the chance of guessing it are pretty low. But the, another twist is that the, if the master guesses who the insider is at the end of the game, then the, ins then the master still wins. So again, you've got to be very subtle with your kind of the questions you're giving and how you lead your team. Um, and you just, you know, because if, you, if you're not, then the insider is going to, sorry, the master is going to guess who the insider is anyway, and uh, they're still going to lose. So uh, a really cool little game that is insider. Next, we have a classic little card game called Six Nymphed. Now, this is um, ultra simple. You're going to have a, a hand of 10 cards numbered from, I think they're one all the way up to 100 and four I believe um, and the idea of the game is to try and get as least points as possible and you do that by simultaneously so every player is going to choose a hand out of their hand of uh, sorry a card out of their hand of cards and reveal them simultaneously and then they are placed um, in accordance to what's on the board you they place in numerical or chronological order but only upwards of the one that's closest to it and there's four different rows and as soon as a sixth card on a row is placed then you take all the other cards and those cards have little bull heads on them which represent negative points. And that's basically how the game plays. You just keep playing cards simultaneously and try and get as least points as possible. It's ultra quick and you can choose to either play over one round or a couple of rounds um, until, you know, until you want to stop. But it plays, I think it plays up to like eight players or so, in 10 players in fact, this one. So uh, yeah, a fantastic, simple game that's, um, you know, there's a quite a lot of luck involved, but there's also some quite clever decisions as you try and you try and kind of manipulate players into doing what you want them to do. You can play the probabilities and try and get away with not taking cards. One that I highly recommend, that is Six Nymphed. Next we have No Thanks. Now, this is a really cool concept of a game where, again, you are trying to get as few points as possible. Um, basically, there's gonna be a card in the middle of the table, um, which represents negative points, numbered from, I think it's one to 35, I believe. Um, and everybody is going to have a hand or a stack of chips, these little plastic chips they can, and all you do is on your turn is you either choose to take the cards as negative points or you can place a chip on it, which means no, you're not gonna take it. And then basically every player keeps doing that and obviously the, the chips on the card are building up and up and up and those chips are worth negative one point at the end of the game. So uh, the chips are gonna be really good because obviously points are bad in this game. But that's basically how the game works is that you, you either take the cards or you put a chip on it. And obviously as, as they build up, you can get more chips, which gives you more passing power. And it's just very clever. And you can be also, there's another little twist to it as well, where if you have um, a row of cards, like in numerical, like if you had the 10, 11 or the 12, they go in one stack and you only score the lowest in that stack. So it's another little layer or wrinkle to the play there. Um, I've probably made that sound more complicated than what it is, but it's a fantastic simple game with loads of interesting kind of decisions in it. That is no thanks. Next we have Coloretto. Now this is a really cool, I guess it's a set collection slash kind of pushy luck style game where a bit like push you are um, playing cards in different columns and um, you are trying to collect three different types of chameleons or colours of chameleons um, and you're going to score for those chameleons based on how many you have at the end of the game. But as I said you only score for three types and any other chameleon you have on top of those three types counts as negative points 
and you can really kind of manipulate the board and, and kind of uh, manipulate other players into taking cards that they don't want to take. Um, it has this great pushy luck element to it when you, you know, do I stop now and take the cards I want, but what am I going to carry on and try and get a bit more bang for my buck? Um, really simple this one, but again, uh, just has a great decision space in it and one that I highly recommend again. So that's Coloretto. Next, I, this game is a bit different than the others. This is Illusion. Now, Illusion probably is one of the simplest games on this um, array of games. It is um, an optical illusion style game where you are basically have cards with loads of different weird designs on. I'll pull one out just to show you. For example, like that. And you are basically playing these cards in almost like a timeline order um, based on the color, the, through the percentage of color on that card. So for example, I would draw this card here like this, and then I would play this card and say, um, you know, what's the percentage of yellow on that card? And I'd, I'd decide it. And then I'd draw the next card or someone else would draw the next card. And then you'd play them in order until you basically trying to determine how much percentage of yellow is on those cards um, compared to the others. And if someone thinks you're wrong, they can challenge you. And, you know, and, and if they challenge you and you turn out to be right, then you get the points. And it's just the first to a few points. And that's basically the game. Um, really, really fun game um, and mind boggling, actually, because you Sometimes the optical illusions look like, you know, one color is the dominant color and it's completely not. And it just really does play with your mind, but ultra simple, ultra fun. That is illusion. Next, we have um, a juggernaut of party games, which is Codenames. Um, this one, um, I don't really get it to the table too much anymore, but it's always pretty much guaranteed success. Um, this is one of the most successful games of the kind of modern era of board gaming. Um, it's a team versus team word game where you are giving one person is like a, a master or a, a code giver and you are giving clues to your team based on this um i think it's a five by five grid of words and you are basically trying to get 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 your team to guess the words that you're giving or the, from the clue you're giving um based on this grid that the only the master can see and they are trying to get them to identify these words but if they identify the wrong words then you can give points to your opponents and there's also like a, a spy card in there as well and if you accidentally kind of divert your team into choosing that spy card then they automatically lose the game so there's a lot of tension in it you've got to be very careful with the clues you give some of the synergies between the words are really interesting because you can say um, i don't know maybe you can say like country and then you give like a number so you can say four which means like there's four words on the grid relating to countries and they got basically you can just kind of you know trying to get as much um you know much mileage out of each guess you give because again, the first person to get all of their clues um, before the other team is the winner. So a really cool game, that's Code Names, a classic. Um, it will get competitive if you play with some people who are competitive, but uh, still, really nice game, Code Names. Um, next we have Spyfall. Now Spyfall is um, pretty much another kind of bluffing style game, or at least for one person. Um, basically, out of all the players in the game, everybody is going to everybody bar one player that is, is gonna get a location card. And that could be like a, a garage or an airport or um, I don't know, like a museum or something. And as I said, everybody but one player is gonna get that card because, because one of those players is going to be a spy. And that spy is gonna have no idea what that place is. And everybody's gonna take turns kind of asking each other questions about that location, such as, I don't know, what are the people wearing here? Are there public here? Um, you know, um, are people spending money here? Or, you know, loads of, you, you can be as creative as you want with these questions. And obviously the spy is trying to deduce from the answers people are giving where this place is. Um, and he's trying to fly under that radar. And if people ask him the questions, you know, sometimes he's not gonna have a clue where this place is and he's just got to try and keep his best poker face on and just give an answer and just, you know, stay committed to that answer and try not to crack under the pressure of people scrutinizing him. And, and obviously if at the end of the game he gets away with not being found out, then he's the winner. But if the spy is found out, then, you know, the spy loses and everybody else wins. But it's ultra funny, um, extremely tense if you are the spy and you can be really put on the spot. So if you don't like that kind of feeling of being put on the spot and having to bluff your way through it, then it's probably not gonna be for you, but the game takes about seven or eight minutes to play um, and it's extremely fun with the right group. That is Spyfall. Next we have For Sale. 
Uh, For Sale is a really cool game. It's an auction style game where you are basically bidding on these different properties um, in order to sell them in the second half of the game based on a blind bidding mechanism. So um, it's a very simple, so as I said, as you accumulate these properties by spending money, and then the second game, you're gonna have these cards out that have different kind of denotations of money or notes on them. And you are playing one of the cards that you've accumulated in the first round um, simultaneously with the other players. And the person who plays the highest property takes the highest value of money. Um, It's an extremely well-designed game. It's so streamlined and um, tense. The each aspect of the game is really strong. You know, knowing how much to bid um, and how much you know you're going to get back in return for it in the next phase. You can be really kind of savvy by, you know, spending very little money but still getting lots of money in the second phase. Uh, there's just loads of different ways to approach the game. Um, again, this is, I think this game is coming up 20 years old and it's really fresh, really fun. And um, one that I think it plays six players. And again, I've played this with so many people and everybody has always enjoyed it. Probably my most played game of all time in my collection. That is for sale, guaranteed good fun. Uh, next, I have probably one of the most obscure games in my collection. That is Tifa Tashin. Um, this is a, another simultaneous card style game that plays four to eight players. Um, you are basically taking the role of corrupt politicians and one person is going to be the president. They're going to draw a number of these money cards equal to the number of players and divide them however he sees fit. Now, it's a negotiation style game, so everybody's kind of trying to manipulate each other and pull the strings and promise each other things in order to get as much money as possible. And they are then kind of, once everybody's kind of, once the president has settled on how much money he's going to give the other players, everybody's going to reveal one of their cards simultaneously, and that's either going to be agree with what the president does, uh, says, um, and keep him in power. You can vote to kick the president out of power. You can skim from the treasury which basically lets you take money from the top of the deck and just it's just a random amount of money you can blackmail other players by putting your little um private detector in front of people which lets you basically take a card money a uh, sorry a card from their hand as money um you can counter blackmail people so if you think people are going to blackmail you you can counter blackmail them and then you end up taking money back off them and it's just a, a brilliant game that you can bribe people with it's it's absolutely fantastic one of the most interactive games or most socially interactive games that you'll ever play um this version here is actually not really available anymore it's got a new rebranding in it on a new retheme of it like this an- anthropomorphic um animals um called good critters but it's exactly the same game, but with a, like a mobster theme. Um, but again, this is one of my favorite games and I couldn't recommend it enough. Um, maybe a tad more advanced than a lot, some of these games on the list, but the, you're gonna get so much more out of it. That is Tifa Tashin, all good critters. Um, and I've got a few more games here that I don't actually own, but um, I'd like to mention. So uh, first we have Cash and Guns. This is uh, another kind of, um, bluffing style game where everybody has like these foam guns and a stack of cards which either say bang on them or click I believe. Um, the bang means that you actually fire the gun, the click means that you are basically got a, a, an empty round and you are basically, it's a, basically a game of chicken. Think of like Reservoir Dogs or something like that where there's a bunch of goods in the middle of the table um, and everybody points guns at each other and basically they're trying to make each other bottle or kind of back out the game because you only have a certain amount of lives, you can only be shot a certain amount of times before you're out and basically each player who stays in each round gets dibs on what's in the middle of the table. And that's pretty much the extent of the game, but it's very fun and you know, pointing guns at your friends and family is, is just funny. Um, so yeah, that's a nice one to check out. Uh, next we have Deception Murder in Hong Kong. Uh, this is what we call a social deduction style game where one person is the forensic scientist, um, other players are detectives, and one player is a murderer. Um, and everybody has this set of cards in front of them, either um, kind of methods of murder, like your weapons, and clues left at the scene. And the cool thing is that this forensic scientist has to silently um, give the other players clues by putting these little bullet um, pawns on these cards. And those cards will kind of, or these, these, I don't know, tiles, these cardboard tiles, and they say things like, you know, what, you know, where, where was where did the murder happen? Um, how was the condition of the body? You know, was it was it you know, uh, was there like a trauma wound to it? Was it cut? Was was there no wounds on it at all? Was it bruises? Um, you know, what? How old was the victim? And through all these different kind of clues that they're given, um, you're trying to deduce what you know, what the answer is or what the solution to the murder is. And obviously, if you're the murderer, you're trying to divert 
other or divert the kind of suspicion onto other players. You can play with a variant where there's a kind of accomplice as well who's also trying to help the murderer. But it's a great game of kind of bluffing and social manipulation. Um, it can be extremely frustrating and kind of um, tense if you are um, playing the playing the forensic scientist and people just aren't getting what you're trying to give. And it's just, yeah, it's a fantastic game. It plays nice and quickly and it has a great kind of theme to it. Uh, next we have Bang the Dice Game. Now this is basically a Yahtzee style game. Uh, plays lots of players. You are essentially either being a sheriff, a deputy or an outlaw or even a renegade. And um, basically everybody's role is secret apart from the sheriff. And the sheriff is, or everybody is rolling dice and choosing either to shoot each other or heal each other. Um, and basically the idea is that if the sheriff, the sheriff wins, um, if he is survives at the end of the game, uh, the deputies win. Also, if the sheriff survives in the game, the outlaw wins if uh, the sheriff is dead and the renegade lives if he's the last man standing. And the cool thing is that you can really manipulate people into thinking, you know, or convince the sheriff into thinking that you're his, um, you know, you're his deputy when even though you're an outlaw. And it's just very funny when, you know, when you kill someone and you thought they were an outlaw and they flip over and it turns out to be your deputy. Just, just a guaranteed good time. That is bang the dice game. Good if you like your Yahtzee style games. Uh, next we have Dixit. Now Dixit is a lovely activity really. Um, it is a game, but I think it's another one of those games where you don't really care about the scores or anything like that. Um, you basically have a hand of cards with this really beautiful abstract art on them, very kind of ethereal, um, loads of things going on. And you are basically, or take turns in giving like a clue. It could be like a word or a phrase or a song or whatever. And um, then you're gonna say that word. Everybody is also gonna have a hand of cards and they're gonna pick the card in their hand that they think best relates to what you've given. Then once everybody's chosen their card, they get put together, get mixed up and put face up and then everybody votes on what they think the actual card was given by the original player. And then you score points accordingly. So if you are, you know, if you were the one choosing the word and everybody votes for you, you, you don't actually get any points, but you, so you want to be kind of accurate, but vague enough so other players could get guessed as well so uh, and then it obviously if, if other people vote for you you get points as well so it's a very nice activity very fun it's one of those games you just get lost in and just enjoy the experience that is dicks it and that basically concludes um, my 22 games that i highly recommend for christmas um, i've had success with pretty much all of these games in kind of party scenarios um, i can pretty much guarantee you're going to have a good time picking any of these um, i think they're all relatively um, available relatively cheap and affordable I said very low rules overhead and low pressure games that you can just play with your friends and family and have a great time without being bored down or bogged down in long games or long rules that you're just not enjoying so yeah these are all great games i highly recommend you check out for christmas so um i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please hit like and subscribe to my channel and have a great christmas